Hey there, welcome back to module seven where we're talking about post-sale emails. And here in lesson three, we're talking about onboarding sequences. Specifically, we're talking about emails that you're gonna send to people who do buy your products and you know when you should send them, et cetera. Now, specifically in this lesson, you'll learn why you should consider an onboarding sequence, when you can skip an onboarding sequence, and what to include in an onboarding sequence. Now, the, the key thing I want you to take away from this is that a good onboarding sequence is your most powerful tool to avoid overwhelm for students and buyers. So I want you to keep that in mind and that's the purpose, that's what you're doing here. Now, if people are overwhelmed by your course or membership or other product, they're more likely to cancel or ask for a refund. We obviously don't want that. So your onboarding sequence is a way to reduce cancellations and reduce refund requests. Now, your buyers need something to guide them through the content. That's what you kind of need to be thinking about is what am I presenting to them and is there a guide, is there a roadmap, is there something to help them work through what they're getting in this course, this membership, whatever it is. Now, if you're dripping content and going live to answer questions, you can probably skip the onboarding sequence because the release of each module and you going live to answer questions is in itself you giving the roadmap to your students of how to go through a course. So if you're doing that, sending an onboarding sequence just kind of sends, seems redundant. And quite honestly, if you're sending, you know, you're, you're dripping out content, dripping out like a module a week, for example, sending an email other than letting people know that the new content is available is in some sense just kind of adding to the content and the potential overwhelm because you're giving them more content. So that's why I'm saying if you're dripping and answering questions, you can probably skip an onboarding sequence. They will get the information by how you choose to drip it out and your Q&A sessions will give them the roadmap of what they should be doing. Now, for evergreen courses, on the other hand, you should create an email sequence that provides the roadmap. In other words, if someone can buy your, your course and get it all at once, they just get access to the whole thing as soon as they buy. That's when creating an email sequence to provide a roadmap can be really handy and help to avoid the overwhelm, avoid refund requests, etc. Now, what an onboarding sequence does is it provides a clear, easy to understand path for your students, customers, etc., whether it's in a membership or in a course. And what I want to get through to you is that your onboarding isn't about teaching anything. It's just about pointing your students in the right direction and guiding them through the material that they already get as part of your product. So keep that in mind as you're thinking through how you would put together, um, you know, an onboarding sequence. So what you might want to do is think of your onboarding sequence as kind of walking students through the content in an organized way on a weekly basis. So generally, an onboarding sequence for an evergreen course will be one email a week. On Monday, normally, you would send it out as kind of, hey, you know, new week, new content. That's kind of what you're doing normally in your onboarding sequence. And you don't have to do it on Mondays. You could do it on the day they signed up if you wanted to, however you want to space it, but generally you're gonna do it weekly. Now, what I want you to think about though is in putting it together, think through how long the course is. If, if your course is something that people should realistically finish in like two weeks and they're like six modules, well, you don't want to do a module a week because then people are going to be getting emails like four weeks after they probably should have finished the course in all reasonable basis. So think through that when you're thinking about the timing. But to create your onboarding sequence, think through how the course would be delivered if it were dripped live. In other words, say, if I were delivering this course live, how would I drip it out and how would I provide feedback? And that should be kind of what your onboarding sequence is mirroring. And then your emails do need to do a little bit, obviously, because they need to be focusing on what content should be up for that week. 
So then what you're going to do is write emails to go out weekly or more frequently if it's a shorter course with a lot of different small pieces that encourage students to consume the content for that week. What you're doing is basically getting them focused. So week one, you're saying, hey, I want you to focus, like in this case, uh, a badass email marketing. If it were evergreen, it would be focusing on, hey, this week you should be focusing on understanding the purpose of email, the email basics, these basic concepts. I want you to spend time thinking about this and going through these things because they are the core of everything we'll be doing in the other modules. So you need to do that. Then in week two, I might move on and start talking about your catch email, or I might have done the catch email during week one as well because that's how I delivered it live. The point is simply to use the emails in an onboarding sequence as a way to encourage people to talk about the importance of whatever you believe they should be consuming in that week in the proper path. So that's how you write the emails. I don't have swipe on this one because you're gonna have to create it based upon your particular product and you know just create it and think through what do I need to deliver to them and deliver it to them in a useful way that will help them and use the story based framework to make it fun, obviously, but just get the content out and get them focused on the right thing. So the key lesson takeaway here in our last lesson is this use an onboarding sequence to help your students avoid overwhelm. It's very helpful and it will help in that process. So that's it. I hope you've enjoyed.